I got another printer. So Sofa was nice enough to send me their SV03, absolutely ginormous printer. I thought my CR10 was big, um, this thing definitely rivals that and I'm really excited to set it next to it and see the size comparison. Um, honestly just carrying this thing up the staircase was really really hard, it's ginormous. We're actually going to take this off the table really quickly because I'm worried it's going to destroy the table. So without further ado, we're going to unbox this, build it, do some test reviews and compare it to other printers I have. So. Let's get to it. So I cut the box open and this is the initial look. Uh, I got the instruction manual here. We even get a nice, free, uh, a nice free roll of filament right here. And just first impressions, this is huge already. Just looking at my CR10 over there, um, I actually measured it. This is like four, maybe five inches bigger. So we got a beast on our hands, guys. Here's the second layer of the box, the actual bed of the printer. Holy crap. That's huge. All right, welcome to my floor. This thing is so big that we're gonna be sitting on the floor assembling it because um, I'm afraid my table will fall over or it won't fit. So let's do this. Now I think we have it assembled. We're gonna go put it over there, over, over, over there, <laughs> and plug it in and turn it on and see what happens. All right, so something I just learned, this printer is so huge, it doesn't fit under the table. I think I'm gonna end up moving that printer down below because, you know, it just doesn't fit. Um, which is, I'm not complaining, this is an awesome printer, but just look at the size comparison between my CR10 and this one. Like, crazy. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna move my printers around, I guess. All right, so we've swapped printers. One thing I noticed already, um, this is a filament sensor, which I've never ever had, um, as well as the BL Touch, which helps with leveling. So this is super cool so far. Um, two things I've never had before that will hopefully make printing a lot easier for me. And uh, yeah, all right, let's go. Cool, cool. Hello. Well, this is working at least. Did I plug in the wrong cables? Not sure what I did, but uh, it's working now. Looks like the BL Touch is lit up as well. So now we're gonna try to level this thing. I believe I can just level bed. Ho ho ho. This may be a game changer, holy crap. Honestly, leveling, uh, leveling a bed yourself is not that hard, but if this fixes it or ends it, that would be, uh, what am I saying? If, if this eliminates the need to have to level things all the time by yourself, that's awesome. Because sometimes I'm really lazy. Okay, this may take a second. He's got his little beak out there, ready to make contact. His landing gear. Mm -hmm. Might not be new for you guys, but it's new for me. All right, I'm gonna stop recording. You know what happens at this point, basically. It's gonna go through all the corners, I guess. So yeah, we'll come back when it's done. All right, so we're gonna load up this sample filament they gave me, uh, because why not? And we're gonna do a test print, assuming that they have a test file on this uh, SD card, which they usually do. So we'll see if I can load that up and get that going and see how the quality comes out. Okay, so I was about to load this filament in, and then I noticed something. So the filament spools up here, and then I think I feed it through the sensor, and then it it's a direct drive, actually. So it goes in through here. 
which is crazy. I've never had one of those before. Um, the instructions are for just a base level SVO3, and uh, so I'm not really sure how to do this, but we're gonna figure it out. All right, all right. I think it should just go like this. Oh! Ah! Okay! So, I'll show you in a second. There's actually a hole in the top that you feed the filament through. That makes sense. I get that. All right. Feed it through the sensor. It basically feeds through like a roller and that's the sensor. And then it goes down, 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 down into this actual nozzle. You pull this back to push it through. We are heated up and it's a success. Now I'm gonna take this thingy and we're gonna load it up. We're gonna see if there's a sample print um, just so I can see if this uh, prints properly, if it's level, etc. And then I'm probably gonna print like an Iron Man thigh, like just test its limits, you know? Cause it's huge. Like I can do whatever I want. So I'm gonna do this first. So I think these are the only two options. It's basket, opto, and this. Uh, and I don't know which one to pick. So we're gonna go with basket. We're gonna see what happens. Wait for filament change to start, but why? Why is it changing filament though? Okay, well, I have no idea what's going on. Now it's uh, reloading the filament, I guess. You can see it, it focuses turning right there. Okay, well, that is definitely not level. Hold on. We gotta, we gotta level this ourselves, okay. We're gonna stop this. So after a lot of research and a couple days off of looking at this thing because I just got really busy, I think I have it. And basically what I had to do, um, I actually looked up a YouTube video on leveling this bed and uh, it had to do with the Z offset. And you had to basically first level the corners, then you auto home and then you do the Z offset. But my problem was the uh, Z axis wasn't moving. So, you go to um, up here in motion, and then you went to advanced settings, and then initialize EEPROM. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna do that right now because I have working, but then you hit um, initialize, then you go back up to, oh shoot, it was configuration. Yeah, configuration, where is it? Restore failsafe, and then you go back and you do all the leveling stuff again, and it should allow you to move the Z-axis. It does move very, very slowly, so you might not notice it. But yeah, so it had to do with the Z-offset setting, and I think we've got it down pretty well. So we're gonna do another test print again, and we're gonna see what happens. Oh, we got it. Yes, okay, that was the problem. So now we're gonna let this print. Um, I actually don't know what we're printing. It's um, this like basket thing, apparently, but we'll see what happens. All right, so what I didn't realize, was this, this is like a long print. Um, almost at 5%, it's been almost an hour. So we might stop it just because I can tell it's working and the print quality looks pretty good, like just based on this right here, but we're gonna print a, a Spider-Man face shell. And we're gonna see how it goes. Um, Cause that's a lot more fun than, than whatever this is. We are almost halfway through this face plate or face shell print. Quality's all right. I don't really need it to be perfect because it's gonna be under a mask. One thing I noticed is that this printer moves really, really quickly and I didn't expect it. So uh, that was a little alarming, but it's actually really, uh, really nice. Here's the finished product. Um, I printed in 0.28 layer height, uh, so draft quality. So I don't expect this quality to be very good. Uh, it's really bumpy actually. Let's talk details on this uh, print really quick and overall just the uh, the actual printer. So what I did was I did 90 and then on the actual printer I slowed it down to 85. That's the speed I printed this at. Yeah, I also printed at 0.28 layer height. So uh, I guess you'd say draft quality, especially because I haven't switched the nozzle to a 0.6 millimeter, which I have all of my other printers at. For a first print, it's, it's great. I mean, I have no complaints. This is gonna be under a mask anyway. Uh, I'm gonna sand it, I'm gonna paint it. What I'm probably gonna do is we have to print the the uh, moving uh, jaw. So what I'll probably do is I'll 
um, play with some settings, probably switch the nozzle, see what kind of print I get for that. Um, so we'll do that next. There's some, some weird things I've noticed so far. It makes you change the filament like every time you start a print, which is really weird. I don't know if that's like a setting I have to change because I, I don't need to change the filament every single time I start a print. Okay, see, this is the most annoying thing about this printer. Whenever I start a print, it like, it just gets rid of all the filament I have in there. Just, I want that filament in there. Don't touch it. But it's like, no, we don't, we don't like you. And I don't understand why. So, maybe that's a setting that I can uh, get rid of, but I don't know. Uh, in terms of quality, it's not a ton better, but I don't blame the printer. Um, I think I can just mess with the settings a little bit more. It's still printing, you know, I'm getting prints, which is, you know, good. That's what it's supposed to do, but I just need to mess with the settings. Overall, it's a really, really good printer. No, no quality issues, nothing like that. I actually printed um, two Iron Man thighs. I've been printing my, my uh, Iron Man suit with it. And this is a like draft quality. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's, it's awesome quality. What I ended up doing with this printer is I actually replaced the nozzle. So instead of it being a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it's 0.6. So it actually speeds up the print a little bit. The one thing I would, I would complain about for this printer is the instructions aren't very like specific um, because I had problems with the leveling because the BL touch um, and you know, the filament sensor is kind of self-explanatory, but I would have liked a little bit more explanation on that as well. Their YouTube channel did help me out in that sense. One thing they could improve on is just the instruction manual needs to be a little more clear. But yeah, um, if you're debating on getting a, a big printer, something that you can print like, you know, helmets, thighs, stuff like that, etc. in one piece, definitely consider this printer. Um, I also have a CR-10. I would definitely, if I had to choose between like a CR-10 um, or this, I would definitely choose this. Um, first of all, it's bigger, which I don't know if that's a, if, if it's an accurate comparison because of that, but it's bigger. It's been more reliable so far, and uh, it's just got, it's got extra bonuses, like the BL Touch and the, the filament sensor. So yeah, if you're looking for a printer, this is definitely one to check out. I believe it's like four, 450 on Amazon. I'll have to check, actually. Let's check right now. All right, so Amazon says it's about 425, so I wasn't too far off. And then the CR10 is about 370. So, what? 50, 50 ish bucks off, and you get a better printer. Honestly, I think I like this one better. So, um, check it out. Uh, thank you again to Sovel for sending me this and letting me review it. Huge help. Um, you came to me in a time of crisis because I really wanted to print my suit, and this printer works amazingly. So, yeah. Uh, let me know if this is a helpful video. I haven't done a review video before, obviously, and I would like to keep doing these. So, uh, drop me a comment. I know part of this video is very chaotic. Um, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get a better setup. Um, but yeah, leave me some feedback, questions, anything. Bye-bye.